Hey everyone, it's Karen again. I would like to also share with you a little bit of how to do kombucha. Maybe not a how-to for you, but this is how I do it. I'm just sharing it. I love kombucha. I find it super awesome that I can just make it on my own and I don't have to worry about store-bought and spend extra money and like four or five bucks on a kombucha. I can just make my own and I can put the flavors in I want. I take makes you appreciate a little more when you make something for yourself. So let me show you a little bit of my kombucha stuff. So first, I, if you look above my fridge, those are my kombucha jars. Oh, you see I have some sauerkraut too. But um, but the I do kombucha in small batch. A lot of people do large batch kombucha. In all honesty, I've never tried large batch, small batch is just where what I've been doing. So if you're not familiar with kombucha, kombucha is just fermented tea. So you use a scoby, let me pull one. Inside of here are the scobies. They are, it's a living organism that ferments your tea. And obviously fermented things are great for your gut microbiome. So I'm sorry, I also have the dishwasher again off this video, but I'm learning. So yeah, so the SCOBY is inside. You put sugar in tea, the SCOBY feeds off of the sugar, and then you get a fermented tea. So this is your first fermentation. You also have a second fermentation, which I do in this bottle here. The second fermentation is where you add your flavoring. So usually you have like, I use mango juice, or you can put real fruit in it. Um, so that's what you do. So I'm going to kind of show you the process. I'm just really showing you what I do. There's so many different ways of doing it. Um, and it's a little bit involved, but once you get the hang of it, it's not a big deal. So what you need first is your tea pitcher, some tea, just use black tea like this. I use organic Newman's own. It's cheap, easy to use. Sugar, plain old white sugar, nothing else. All right, so you're just gonna take, initially, I just, I don't even measure, I just pour a bunch of sugar in there. I like cover the bottom of this pitch with the sugar. And then, I use 10 tea bags for what I'm doing. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This stuff is really easy cheap to buy from the store. That's why I use it. I might go with a more sustainable option next time and not use tea bags. Um, so we just take these, throw them in here. I usually don't keep the little tab. It just gets messy. So 10, there's no magic number, it's just whatever strength you like. But this seems to be sufficient for what I do. So what we're really doing here is just, let's make sure we don't get that mixed up. What we do here is just make sure that, um, you know, it's strong enough to actually ferment. So now I got my tea bags and my sugar. Next, we need to get the kettle. I just have an electric kettle. My electric kettle. And I fill it, I fill it all the way up with water. So 1.7 liters makes, I don't know, enough tea to be useful. And then what I do after, so I put the hot water in, I let it, um, I let the sugar dissolve and I let the tea brew. Uh -huh. And then after that, what I do is, I just let it, it needs to cool to room temperature or it needs to go in the fridge. Sometimes I just make it ahead of time. So, cause I'm too busy to do it all in one sitting. Cause you do have to let it cool. If you don't let it cool, it will kill your scobies. So you wanna chill it or whatever. You can put it in cold too. That's not a big deal. 
you just have to make sure it's not gonna kill your scoby. So I usually stick it in the fridge for a little bit, forget about it and come back if I have time or sometimes I come back in a couple days even. So it's not like you have to do any of this right away. So just being busy and being a mom and having a full-time job, it's just easier to do it when I can, make the tea and then go from there. All right, so I've got it full. So I'm gonna let it boil. And then make some tea. All right, so the tea is boiled and now we just pour it in and let it steep. After it steeps, I'll add cold water to it, chill it, and then we'll come back and make some kombucha. Last but not least, the tea is now steeped to its lovely dark brown color. We just need to fill the rest with water. So I, in this two quart pitcher, there we go. In this two quart pitcher, I just fill it all the way up or pretty close to the top. And it's still too hot. I can see steam coming off of it. I'm sure you guys can, but too hot to, even after this sits for a little while, you really want to put it in the fridge because it's just too hot for the kombucha, for the scobies. So this, what we're doing now is we're making the tea with the sugar in it to feed the scobies. And that's always the first step is getting your tea ready. That should be enough. Now I'll try to pull it out without spilling it. There we go. All right, so like I said, this is really just to feed the scobies. So what we're gonna do next, after this cools, we're going to take our scobies in our jars up here, and we're going to pour them out into the other bottles and start our second fermentation process. So I'll show you how that goes. I'll explain it a little more then. Okay, so the tea has cooled to at least, uh, I mean, it's still warm, but it's not gonna kill the scoby at this point. There's a certain temperature that it needs to be, it just seems, needs to be like lukewarm essentially. So you don't want it too hot, too cold is not the end of the world, not bad. So basically what I have is the tea these are my second fermentation bottles. I do six, so I have one for each jar of kombucha. I don't know, this is just what works for me. And then I take some boathouse mango. That's just what I like. You can add ginger, you can do whatever the heck you want. I've also done a watermelon mint, which is pretty good. Um, but you know, do whatever you want. Whatever floats your boat. You can actually use real fruit. I would just maybe puree it instead of put it in chunks since it's gonna go in these little bottles. But I'll just show you what I do, okay? From the top. But what I'm gonna start with is I take one of these bottles. I have a funnel and I put the funnel in the bottle. And then I take one of my kombucha jars and I open it. I usually, you can use cheesecloth I just use paper towels because it's what I have. But I put the date and last time I did my kombucha, so the last time was August 21st. So it's been a little over a week at this point. I don't like letting my kombucha go too long because it gets a little too much, but it's really up to you. So I just take my scobies. This one, doesn't need to be thin. Sometimes you have to thin the scobies out, but the kombucha is really here right now. This is all the fermented tea. I lift up my funnel a little bit so it doesn't overflow, because trust me, it will happen. And I just pour it up, pour it in, until the bottle starts to round. So right now you can see it's right there. So that's the first step. The second step is taking your fruit or whatever you want to flavor it with. You don't have to flavor kombucha, but it's a good idea. And I, again, lift the funnel so that I can see where, how much is going in. If you don't lift it, 
then it pulls up in here and you don't see how much is actually going in and it definitely overflows. So you pour it in, I only pour in about this much right up to this. I leave a little room for air and bubbles and then I put it in here, cap it off. And now you have your second fermentation bottle. So I leave this on the shelf for a good three to four days and I stick it in the fridge for another couple and that's it. So I'm just gonna finish off these bottles. The next thing you wanna do though, don't forget, we gotta feed our SCOBY for next time. And actually I like to put the lid on this with the filtered side on the spout so my tea bags don't roll out into my kombucha. And then I just pour this in up to the top and there you go. I think it's just easy to do small bash because I know exactly how much goes into the brown bottles and I don't have to think too hard about it. <laughs> Get your Sharpie and then relabel. So today is September 6th. And then that's one down. And you just keep going. So an important thing to remember when you're doing this is that you don't want to drain all of the kombucha out. This one probably needs to be thin because your SCOBY needs a little bit of the old stuff. It keeps the bacteria in there. It needs a little bit of the old stuff to keep its consistency. So always leave a little bit in there. This one actually has a giant SCOBY in it and it probably should be thinned, but um, I usually like to wear gloves to do it because it will Stain your hands. <laughs> Just be forewarned. If you have brown hands afterwards, it will stain them from the tannins and the tea. So just keep that in mind. I always wear gloves when I do that, and I just don't have any right now. A great thing to do with your extra scobies, if you don't just want to toss them, is give them to a friend. So you can make a little scoby, you can make a little scoby hotel and just like fill one of these jars up with, one of these jars up with a little extra scobies and some tea and just set it aside. I usually have enough to do that at least each time I do this, the kombucha. Um, and then that way you can share the love. It's also a good idea to put your scobies in like a room temperature, slightly above room temperature. So like the top of your fridge is a little warmer. Same with like fermenting anything. You want it to be a little warmer. If your house is really cold um, or it's winter, just stick it up above somewhere, you know, heat rises. So it's going to be warmer up there. should go in a warm place so I also stick it on top of the fridge and then in like three or four days I just pop it inside the fridge to cool it and actually sometimes that helps develop the flavor a little more so honestly my last couple of bottles that I drink are probably my favorite generally you can also like increase the comb the carbonation in it if you want by adding more sugar uh, I haven't really perfected that myself but I find that it's a pretty good level of uh, carbonation where I want it so Anyways, thank you so much for joining me on this kombucha making day and I hope to be able to share some more of this stuff with you soon. I will just essentially find some random things I do and post it and hopefully you guys will find it entertaining or not or enjoyable in some fashion or learn something. So if you have any tips for kombucha making, let me know, especially on the carbonation. Thanks guys. <laughs>